live from the Ham Shack. Shut up and sit down. Hey guys, wanted to do a video about the, the actual Ham Shack. This is my Ham Shack in the background here. This is where I film all of my videos for YouTube and uh, other platforms. We're on other platforms now, so go check those out as well. Um, <clears throat> but on this channel, we do reviews, news, and how-tos of everything that's new in amateur radio. So that means what I've been doing is spending all my time on YouTube and making videos, and I love it. I love spending all my time on YouTube. We broke 40,000 subscribers not too long ago, and, uh, and it's still continuing to grow, and I'm really excited. And I'm really excited to see how much it grows after this. But So what I'm trying to get around to here is today's episode is going to be a series that I'm going to start. This is going to be the first in a series of several about building out the ham shack because I spend all my time on YouTube making videos and I've got all this stuff sitting around in the shack, in the garage, in some in storage and it's all like, oh, I'm gonna, eventually I'm gonna do this and eventually I'm gonna do this and this is, I'm planning to put this in the ham shack and I'm planning to put this antenna up and I'm planning to put this radio in the truck someday. And it all just kind of gets forgotten about, not really forgotten about, but put, put on the back burner because I'm spending all my time making videos. So I'm missing out on amateur radio. Well, guess what? I figured out how to fix that. I'm going to make a video about putting my shack together. Why not? I've asked people, people have asked me to do that in the first place anyway. So this is going to be the first of a series of videos I'm going to do with putting the shack together, my plans to put the shack together. I'm going to go through this episode here, talk about my plans to put the shack together, what I have planned out, what I have laid out. And then as I do each step, I'll video that and put it up as a subsequent episode after this one. So, uh, wanted to start here, start right, right outside where it, uh, where it makes sense. This is the ham shack right there. And Electra approves, don't you? You approve, don't you? Good, yeah, she approves. So I'm gonna walk around here. This is my electrical line that I have coming into it. And um, I buried this myself several years ago. It goes around to the house right there. I had an electrician come in and put two extra big breakers in my breaker box in the panel, which is in, so that's the garage, just about uh, outside of the garage. Through that wall on the other side of that wall is the, the breaker panel for the whole house. And I had them add two big new breakers. I think they're like 50 amps each or something like that. And uh, had them add two breakers and then I buried the line myself and it went. So that's where the electrical line comes in, right next to it here. If you can see this, this is just a standard copper, um, I think it's an eight foot copper uh, mast, pole, whatever. Copper rod, I think they call it. And it's buried in the ground and that's where I'm gonna put my, I've got it, it's only about less than five feet out of the ground right now because I've buried it in there a little bit over three feet. That's where I'm gonna put my coax coming out of, of the shack and put some ground connections on it um, and lightning arresters on it. So we'll get to that in another episode. Uh, you can see right now where I've got, this is the coax, this is the LMR 400 I've got coming out of the shack now. It runs along the fence, just like that. And it goes up to this antenna up there. Now at the top of this, this is, a, this is currently what I have is a center-fed homebrew dipole for 20 meters. I don't know if you can see the wire or not. So this mast configuration that I have currently bolted to my fence, I'm going to keep this, but this is going to be like a secondary for me. I got this idea from a friend of mine, Kent, WA5YXS. He said, what you do is you buy three, maybe four, I've only got up three right now, different uh, pieces of top rail, um, chain link fence top rail. 
and then you get all three or four of them the, the different sizes. So each size is the next size smaller. So you start with the larger one on the bottom, you drill a hole into it, which is right there. Put a bolt through it about 18 inches, maybe a foot, maybe 18 inches down from the top of the largest one. Drop the second largest one into the top of it. And then you do that again from the second largest to the third largest. Then you do that again from the third largest to the, the fourth largest. And they kind of fit inside each other. And then you use radiator hose clamps and clamp them to the fence post, which is already two feet in the ground. So that is what I've done there. On the, uh, on the ends of the dipole, I have these other quarter inch steel masts, which you can tell they need to be painted because this, this rusted. And then I have the, the legs of the dipole strung up right there, you can see. So this is the dipole antenna. I had a 40 meter up here for a while. I put a 10 meter up for a short period of time. Right now it's a 20 meter. I'm limited to one band since it is a center fed dipole, but that's what I've been using typically at my house right now. This is part of the tower, this is a Rome 25G, one section of the tower that I'm planning on putting up. And uh, it will be basically right back here. Put that out there. So right here against my chimney, is where I'm planning to put the tower. And it's gonna go, the chimney goes up 27 feet. I've measured that a couple times, right there. And then the tower I have is about 40, I have, I have about 50 foot worth of tower right now. Um, I don't think I'll be putting up all of the tower. Um, I think I'll probably putting, be putting up um, 40 to 45 feet of it. I haven't decided yet. But it's gonna go right there and it's gonna go, and I'm, I'll bolt it to the house one or two spots and then it'll go up. And I have an NA4RR hex beam, which will do 6, 10, 12, 15, 17, and 20 meters. It does six bands, six sided and six bands both. And that is my current plan. And that is my current plan for my main HF base antenna. At which point in time, I'll probably put a 40, probably a 40 meter and 80 meter fan dipole on that, on that fence post mast that we're, uh, that I just showed. Um, I might, I have a, I might put up a 30 and 40 meter fan dipole and string up an 80 meter elsewhere. Uh, at the top of the tower, I do plan to put some pulleys so that I can string up dipoles in like a sloper configuration or even string up the center of a dipole um, and kind of reconfigure stuff around the yard because I got to make room for experimentation. I don't want to put up just one thing and just have say that's it. That's all I'm using because I'm always doing, you know, I get new antennas to do new videos on. And I do this. I do I do all the all kinds of other stuff and I'm just like, well, I need something that will be non-permanent. You know, I have I'll have my permanent hex beam set up. I'll probably have a permanent dipole up on top of that fan. I do have also I didn't show you this yet. Also on the back side of the, of the shack here. These are just sitting on the ground right now, but I've got Yaggies. This is a dual band Yaggie right here. No, I'm sorry. The one in the back's a dual band Yaggie. Whoa. This is a dual band Yaggie right here. Two meters and 440. I want to put that for uh, for uh, two yeah two meters and 440 dual band Yagi, and then this Yagi here this is uh, half a section, a section it's so it's twice that long it looks like it's um one two three two three four five looks like it's about a nine or ten element two twenty Yagi, so that'll be for doing two twenty sideband I picked those up at a ham fest a couple of years ago. Uh, I, Never put them up, obviously, but I'm going to probably put them right below the hex beam and uh, point them in the same direction as the hex beam so that I can switch around and do um, single sideband, two meters, single sideband, 220, single sideband, 
440. Really looking forward to that. I've got a Yaesu FT736R right now with two meters and 440. I just bought a transverter to go on to my flex radio. So I'm gonna have fun tinkering around with that because the, the flex radio is made to take a transverter. So let's go take a look inside the shack and I'll show you my plans. All right, make sure the lights are on in here. Yep. So this is the, <laughs> this is the part of the ham shack that you don't see. Honestly, it's not that large. It's a 10 by 15 building. If I had it to do over again, I would have done something a little bit bigger. Um, I'll turn these lights on here so I can see that a bit better. And uh, I've, got, um, I've got a workbench here that's got junk all over it. This is where I sometimes do like radio programming or some uh, minor soldering. I'm not great at soldering myself. Uh, got the beer fridge, all, obviously. Got to have the beer fridge. And the beer fridge there, and I got the kegerator right there with the, uh, with the pump on it. Uh, there's nothing currently in the kegerator at this moment in time, but that is the kegerator there. This is a uh, sitting couch. I'm going to probably do in some more video stuff from a couch on a different channel, but that's going to be there. And there's a 10 point that I shot a few years ago. So that's, uh, that's that. These are the lights that I use. Those are the studio lights. There's two soft boxes hanging from the ceiling there. Put them on the sale. I got these ceiling mounts on uh, Amazon and it keeps them out of the way from having, they were sitting on light stands for a long time and I'm like, man, these are in the way. I've got so limited room here. I just decided to put up, uh, up on the ceiling and just plug them into the plugs here. There's one thing this shack has, it's plenty of electricity because I've got those 250 amps running to it. So my, my original plan for this, and this is kind of still what I'm working on, that's my all-star node right there. It's a 220 uh, mono band Alenco mobile radio with a Raspberry Pi on top of it. I want it, that, that black shelf right there, I want to take and hang up a bunch of different mobile radios ba for, you know, for base station radios, and then have a switch that, you know, run them in, all into the MFJ power distribution blocks there. Uh, that's that's right there and then have them on have one maybe two antennas up and switch the radios out and use whichever ones I choose to use that's the overhead camera that I use in a lot of my shots here it's mounted to the ceiling uh, because the the ceiling is a kind of a it's an angled ceiling there's not a flat ceiling up top it's angled like that and uh, that's the, but this, this arm right here slides in and out this way. So I can slide it in and out and kind of adjust that some. So when I'm doing videos with overhead shots, that's what I'm using. This is the, this is the shelf here of all the stuff that I need to review. Well, some of that stuff has been reviewed. That second shelf, the bottom shelf is just uh, storage. The, the second shelf there is some stuff that I have reviewed, most that I have reviewed, and the, Third shelf there is stuff that I need to review that's in the pipe that you're going to see upcoming. Uh, this is storage right here also. That's the BTEC 50x3, which we saw a video on that a while back. There's my Abri antenna. That's a 9600 that I need to repair, uh, which is not hard to do, by the way. So I'm probably going to be putting that on video also. I've got my green screen on a slide bar here that I can slide in and out this way. Let me put the camera down. So I can slide this in and out like this right here and it goes, that way I can use the green screen and I can not use the green screen when I don't want to. I've got this switch on back here that turns everything on. Uh, including my lighted sign for uh, uh, my logoed sign that that gifts for hams made me. All this stuff back here is basically basically just kind of sitting here waiting. Um, these are some. Move this over here. 
These are some, obviously that's my Yezu uh, FT-101 EE right there. This is the VFOB for it, and this is the speaker for it right here. It came with an amplifier. I had a guy that's local in McKinney that does vintage repair. I had him look at all this stuff. Well, I didn't have him look at the speaker. I had him look at the radio and the VFO and the amplifier. He said the radio was almost new inside. He's like, you got a really good, whatever you paid for this must have probably was a really good deal because everything in here is really top notch. You know, the VFOB was fine also. He said the amplifier was repairable, but probably not worth it because of what it would cost to repair it would be more than you could probably buy a used one for at Hamfests. I'm sort of a little bit regretting getting rid of that because I've not been able to find an FL1200B amplifier at Hamfests yet. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I will. I will. I'll find one. It's not high priority. But that's the Yezu station right there. I'm going to do some HF on it eventually. Uh, that's a VOIP foam for mesh networking. These are my cigars. I originally built this shack to be a cigar bar, a cigar lounge come outside and smoke cigars whenever I wanted to. It was, um, I used it that way for a year or so. Um, and that, well, the original reason I bought, I brought, I, I did the shop was a, was a workshop because that's why I put all the electricity in it. And then I did that for a while and I kind of got tired of it. And then that's when I decided to sheetrock and insulate it. Because this is all, all this sheet rocking and insulation on the walls here. I did all this myself. This right here. That's just regular old sheet rock um, with insulation behind it. Textured and painted. Did all that myself. Uh, put up all the lights myself. Uh, pretty much did everything myself except for the actual structure building itself. So, um, so that was, it's always fun to do that. So these Motorola radios right here are MCS 2000s. Those are my two, well, no, that's only one of them. The other one's on the bench back there. That right there is a Motorola MCS 2000, 110 watt. I have one for VHF and one for UHF. My original plan was to get those programmed up from my local repeaters and put them outside on an Ed Fong 250 watt dual band J-pole that he built special for me uh, that would handle the power because regular Ed Fong J-pole handle about 50 watts. And those are 110 watt radios. So programming Motorola's is a bit of a challenge. I put a code plug into them a while back and I couldn't key up anything. So I'm sure I did something wrong. If anyone, uh, if anyone has any information out there about how to program an MCS 2000, let me know. I do have a code plug from Kent, uh, W5YXS, and he's, uh, he knows much more about Motorola's than I do. So that's my IC7700. Let me move this. Uh, this is hooked up power wise but it's not hooked up to an antenna i've actually never used it so i'm looking forward to finally getting to use this one day uh, the amplifier came from the same place the al1200 amplifier the 736r i picked up from a friend of mine at at a ham fest craig um, and he's and it's got it's very clean looking incredibly clean i've been wanting to do something with uh, two meters for 40 sideband for a long time so i picked that radio up and it it is plugged in also. I asked him a while back if it had the, uh, the PL tone board in it and he said he couldn't remember. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to try it out and see if it actually works on repeaters. So down here underneath the sh uh, desk is the flex radio. And I don't have it up there because why? Why would you need it up there? You don't, uh, I've got smart SDR software installed on this computer right here. And generally speaking, when you see me on FTA, this is where I'm at. I'm either at this computer or I'm remoted into this computer and working FT8 from that radio right there underneath the desk. That's my maestro. Um, at the time of this recording, the 13 Colonies event is going on. And I've set up the maestro to connect to the flex, which the flex is the one right now connected to that 20 meter center-fed dipole outside that we just saw. And I'm um, going to be trying to get to get the uh, 13 Colonies uh, clean sweep again this year. So underneath the desk is all kinds of networking stuff. I've got two switches there. The switch at the, at the right there with the yellow Ethernet going into it is actually a mesh node. That's my 
mesh node that has a SSH tunnel setup, tunnel server setup on it. So I've got several stations around the Metroplex that are tunneled into me, and that's where they're going there. Uh, the computer on the left is my streaming computer. The computer on the right is my computer that runs the Flex Smart SDR software and several other programming pieces of software. And as I am looking into the camera right there, which is, you can see the 13 Colony Special Event website pulled up on that screen. This is where I'm sitting. This is my point of view. I've got the lights above me here. And I've got the monitor there, the mixing board there. That's one, that's my main microphone. And my second microphone is here. That's the one Frank usually uses. So that is it. That is where things are right now. I think the first thing I'm gonna do is put some coax. So what I'm gonna do is put some coax together. Uh, short runs, five, six foot runs of LMR 400. Run them from all these radios out to the shack to that uh, copper rod grounding rod that I just showed you and connect them via lightning arrestor. DX Engineering makes a copper plate that fits over a grounding rod and you bolt it to, to itself. There's two pieces, you bolt it to itself around the grounding rod and then on that plate you can mount lightning arresters from like Alpha Delta or um, polyphasers. These polyphasers, Alpha Delta makes some too. I think MFJ makes some. Uh, these polyphaser lightning arresters. So these mount via the mounting plate on this to the DX engineering plate and then your coax runs through that and it will it will provide lightning protection from nearby lightning strikes. If it gets struck direct on, it's probably not going to do anything, but um, but it will provide a ground for your coax and a lightning rest for your coax. So it's, it's, something, it's something to add to the mix just because. That whole shelf I just showed you is probably going to change up quite a bit. Um, I'm going to get rid of the, some of the non-radio stuff and put more radios on the shelves because it's a ham shack. It's supposed to have radios on the shelves. <laughs> so, and I don't really smoke cigars much in here anymore anyway. I used to, but with all the radio stuff in here, I, just, I usually just go outside. Um, it's just really hot in Texas in, in the summer, so it's hard to do that. So let me know what you think in the comments below, guys. This was a longer than normal video, but I wanted to show everything. This is my starting point. Any suggestions are welcome. Because I'm going to go through and do this and make these videos and, and record this stuff. But any suggestions are welcome as far as where I put the radios, how I wire them up, how I do this, how I do this. Um, there's, there's three, I don't, I don't know if I showed you. There's a whole mess of batteries. So right there is a bank of batteries that I keep charged with, the, with that um, standard charger, that maintainer that's on top of them. I'm gonna eventually build the shack into be solar powered, although, you know, some of it might not, like the refrigerators and stuff may not be on there, but the radios will. So the three gray batteries on the right are 200 amp hour a piece. The dark gray one towards the left is 170 and the, the red one on the far left is 120 amp hours. And I just pop the maintainer back and forth to each one, you know, every day or two to make sure I keep them all charged. I have underneath here, I have a, okay, there's a distribution block there, but somewhere around here I have my buddy pole charge maintainer. So I, d I don't know where it is right now, but anyway, so eventually all of the shack stuff will be running on solar power, battery power. I've got two 100 watt solar panels to put on the roof. Uh, they're in storage. And then I've got, uh, I've got the buddy buddy pole uh solar car charge controller and i've got another brand also so i'm going to tinker around with that you're going to see some putting putting solar power in the shack or how to connect batteries in parallel videos upcoming also so that is that's part of the gig 
But like I said, it's all a work in progress and it has been for so long. I'm just tired of, um, tired of waiting. I wanna get on the air. I wanna have uh, time to put the station, put my station together. I wanna have time to, uh, my glasses go. I have time to put my station together. I wanna have time to um, get on the air and use it on HF contesting, field day, 13 colony events, like what's going on right now and this kind of stuff. So um, suggestions are welcome. Comments, put your comments below. Let me know what you think, if I should move stuff around or if you have a, a useful tool uh, for how to do some of the stuff I talked about on the video today. I would appreciate hearing about it. 73 guys, I look forward to uh, chatting with you over this uh, project.